Welcome to another presentation where we're looking at what Jesus said about various topics and themes. What did Jesus say about grace and faith? These are two key words in the biblical record and they carry two very important ideas. The words are interlinked in their meaning. In the New Testament alone the word grace is used 151 times. An important theme and the idea is unique to the Christian way of thinking. The word faith or faithful or the verb that derives from it, which we will look at in a moment, a word group 549 times in the New Testament. Important ideas and they're interlinked. Let's start by looking at grace. In some ways it's simpler, although it's often rejected by many people. There's a simple description. Grace is God doing for us what we do not deserve, what we cannot earn, and what we can never repay. That's the real meaning of the original word in the biblical languages. You could summarize it that way by that simple pair of words. Grace is undeserved favor. If you like, we humans don't deserve it. But God is willing to do it for us. Because God is love. His agenda is always the best for humanity. Undeserved favour. We can see this in a few references. In John's Gospel, John notice, notes that grace and truth come, came through Jesus Christ. Grace is to be seen in him. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, did not deserve, could not earn, and can never repay. Undeserved favour. But it's linked here to truth, that which is based on clear evidence. If in fact you look at the Gospel accounts, Jesus taught very little about grace. He didn't have to. He lived grace, the grace of God, before our eyes. His agenda was the best for other humans, humans with whom he had interactions throughout his earthly life. He lived grace before our eyes. He demonstrated it. He showed its meaning. Luke records in the Acts of the Apostles, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved, just as they are. Now the word saved means rescued. Because of what Jesus does for us, his grace, we have the opportunity to be rescued. Rescued from all the mess we make of life. Rescued from the problems that face us. Rescued in every sense. And it's open to everybody, just as they are. Paul writes, For it is by grace that you have been saved. Again, that word means rescued. Rescued from the consequences of all the wrong things we've done in our lives, all the way we have messed things up. For it is by grace you have been rescued through faith. Now we have the connection between the two words through faith. And then Paul stresses that is, this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. God does it for us. Undeserved favour. 
God does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We're not able to rescue ourselves from the mess we make of things. God is able to rescue us. And towards the end of the Acts of the Apostles, Paul speaking, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Paul had the task of speaking to people, making known God's grace and enabling them to respond to it. God doing for them what they couldn't do for themselves. And his task was to do that and he wanted to complete the task. So, we ask the question, what is grace? The very simple phrase, undeserved favour. We mess up our lives all the time. God is able and willing to rescue us. And we see that in Jesus. Jesus showed us God's grace in his life death resurrection he showed us God's grace by doing for us what we do not deserve cannot earn and can never repay that's grace now let's move to faith just a little bit more complex here are some wrong ideas some people think that faith means you believe in things that are simply impossible. Not true. Other people think that faith means taking a step in the dark. Blind faith is the phrase we use. That's not biblical faith either. It's not what the word means. There are those who think that some people are capable of faith and others are not. And they say things like, I wish I had your faith. That's not true either. We're all given the capacity for faith. Others think about it almost like wishful thinking. What we want to be true, we think is true. That's not what the Bible word means. There are those who think they've got to work at faith. You've got to kind of screw up yourself within your mental self and say, I'm going to believe, I'm going to believe, I'm going to believe. That's not what faith is either. It's not hard work and effort. Well, some people think hey, faith is just means hoping for the best. Crossing your fingers behind your back and hoping things will work out. That's not faith either. Now, these are some of the descriptions we've got that are not true. But we've also got that one. And that's crept into Christianity. You've got faith because you believe A, believe B, believe C you're accepting certain truths now A, B and C may very well be true but faith is not basically an intellectual task it's not to do with your mind accepting things it's got a different meaning in the biblical languages here's a simple picture The best simple description is faith is a love response to God. That expands it. We take God seriously. And then we act accordingly. Faith is a word of action. It's a word of doing. It's a word of activity. It's a word of decision. Response is always decision. We respond to what God has done for us. We listen to what he's saying. And we act. We do things. That's what the word means in both the biblical languages. A love response to God. We take God seriously. And we act accordingly. Now I said it was slightly more difficult. The problem is the English language. The original languages don't have the problem, but English does. In English we have the word faith, we have the word believe, and then we have the word faithfulness. 
Now, in the original language, it's basically they're all the same word. Faith is the noun. Describes our love response. Believe is the verb. Because we don't have in English the word to faith. It doesn't exist, but it does exist in the original languages. Same word. So we have to use the word believe. Now that poses an immediate problem because the word believe often carries with it we're using our brains. Faith has got the idea of action, response, decision. We take God seriously and act accordingly. Believe is exactly the same. And faithfulness is also the same word. In fact, the word faith and faithfulness is the same word in both of the biblical languages. And faithfulness is often a better translation of the original languages. But faithfulness simply means ongoing faith. Faith that just keeps taking God seriously and acting accordingly. But the big thing to remember is every time in your Bibles you see the word believe, think of the word faith. Because basically believe means to have faith. And that's a word of action, not intellect in the original languages. So we've got the concept here of faith. Now I can look at it at four levels and this helps us to see where it fits. All human beings can show a response to others. Action. Faith. We can trust others. We can depend on others. We can even obey others. These are words of decision, words of response. We can all do that. That's just a mark of being a human being. We have to do it. We trust the pilot of the airplane to take us to the d destination that we seek to go to. If we're climbing with somebody, we trust our partner when they give instructions and they trust us. Otherwise, one or other will get killed. We all can trust each other. It's a capacity in being a human. Now that is faith or belief to believe faithfulness in the biblical languages. A decision, a love response. We take God seriously at his word and we act accordingly. And because the capacity for faith is built into being a human, that capacity is there for each of us. It's a decision. It's a response. And we can do it regularly. We can live our lives, building our lives, taking God seriously, acting accordingly. We build it round what he's saying and directing us to do. That's the concept of faithfulness, which is in the Bible. And the Bible doesn't distinguish faithfulness from faith in the original languages. Faithful just means it goes on. It's an ongoing love response, if you like. But the Bible also mentions, just occasionally, the gift of faith. That's my description of it, a kind of divinely given surge of confidence to respond. We're faced with an almost impossible task, or a task that is impossible, humanly speaking. And we seek God and we ask God, help me, Lord. And he gives us a, a kind of divinely given surge of confidence so that we can take action. Again, faith is an action word. It's a response word. We can do something that humanly is impossible. That's described as the gift of faith. Two examples. 
both from the Gospels. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak I'll be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. Now in the culture of that day, for a woman to do that was unacceptable. They were second-class citizens and they didn't go up and touch the cloak of a man. You see, her response was, she had seen who Jesus was, she had seen something of what he was able to do, she took it seriously and acted accordingly. If only I touch his cloak. She was determined. She took it seriously and acted accordingly. It wasn't something intellectual. It was a response. It was a decision. And that response and decision allowed Jesus to release the healing to her. Jesus could have said, your action has healed you. There is faith operating. We take God seriously and act accordingly. In this case, she took Jesus seriously and acted accordingly. She had seen, no doubt, his healing power. If only I can get near him. But being a woman, she couldn't do it. So she did it coming up behind him. The culture prevented her being more open. But her response, her decision, was just as real. Here's another one. I've summarized it there. She took Jesus seriously and came to him for help. Now let's move to the next one. John writes that about Jesus. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. In other words, didn't give him a love response. He came to that which was his own, his own people. But his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Most of his nation, the Jewish people, didn't recognize him. They didn't respond to him, but there were some who did. Now notice it's the word believe to those who believed in his name. Again, we think it's something intellectual. No, that's not what the word means. That's just the verb from faith. It's action. To those who responded. Responded to all Jesus stood for, which is what his name means. Those who took him seriously and responded. He gave the right to become children of God. This describes what is true for every follower of Jesus. We may not put it in exactly these words. We respond. We take Jesus seriously. And that opens the door to his kingdom. We're invited in. We become God's children. We're acceptable to God. We become part of his family. And the process starts by which God, through the Holy Spirit, is seeking to transform us to become more like Jesus. There's a picture of faith in action. Our response to Jesus. Hebrews 11 is the great chapter of faith, but notice they all had faith, but it meant action. He brought. He lived his life and was taken. He built. He obeyed. He offered. He chose a decision. 
The people passed. The walls fell. She welcomed the spies. And if you read through that chapter in Hebrews 11, you can see that faith means action. These people responded to God. They took God seriously and acted accordingly. A love response. That's faith. It always involved action. It's not an intellectual word. It's a word of response. Love response. Two words interlinked. God does for us what we cannot turn, do not deserve and cannot repay. Faith is our response to all of that. We respond to God's grace. We respond to all he's done for us that we don't deserve, we can't turn, we can't repay. We respond to it. We commit ourselves to live the, our lives the Jesus way. Faith is our love response to God's grace. The two ideas go together. And that's why I picture them that way. They're interlocked. Grace, God takes the initiative, does it for us. But it has no meaning unless we respond. Love response is faith. God does it for us. We respond accordingly. The two things fit together. That's grace and faith. Problem is, we human beings so often try to earn our way to God's favour. We've got a kind of arrogance. We want to do things our way. We think we're no better than God. We can manage without God doesn't work. Some people think grace is a cop-out. God does it for us so we don't have to bother doing anything. No, in the biblical sense the two words are interlocked and interlinked. What Jesus did for us is only meaningful when we take it seriously and respond. The two must go together. The place when we find it hardest and when things are going well. We think we're coping okay, we're managing fine, God squeezed to the edge. In the process we lose it, we miss it, we miss God's best. Sadly, many refuse to come and respond to God. Tragically, the reason for that is summarised in one word. Pride. God does for us what we cannot do for ourselves, do not deserve, cannot repay. But it is only meaningful when we respond, take a decision, a love response. That is grace and faith. next presentation will look about what Jesus said about illness and healing.